Viewers, thank you so much for joining us on this week's show, The Prophetic Journey with Bishop Dr. Ida Bidasait. It is at this show that we profile the real life stories of real people with real issues, as well as the real solution, which is Jesus Christ, always ministered by Bishop Dr. Ida Bidasait. Now, this week, we have two amazing sisters that have been on this journey with us here at Christ Ambassadors Church Ministries, and I'm about to introduce them to you. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us right here in the ATV studios. It is an absolute pleasure. Once again, I have to highlight that it's an absolute pleasure to have you in our studios. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming through. You look alike. Please, <laughs> please forgive me when I have, when I get confused. But would you kindly introduce yourselves? I do not know whom I should begin with. <laughs> My name is Nono. Nono, yes. No. And no. Yes. It is such a wonder to have you. And especially we have also been watching your series of deliverances in the Miracle Center right here in Christ Ambassador's Church. We just want to know a little more about you. Hence, we have you in the studios. But we also are aware that you also had another interview with our Father in the Lord, Bishop Dr. Ida Peter Said. But today we just want to highlight on something that recently happened during our crossover night service. But before we go any further into our program, I'm just going to ask you to just tell us more about yourselves, um, what you do. Just introduce yourselves, ladies, once again. Okay, um, once again, my name is I'm a born again Christian. Yes. Uh, I love the Lord. Um, and I came to Christ Ambassadors in 2017. Um, yeah, and ever since my life has never been the same. It has never been the same. We can tell from the smile. And for yourself, Snell. I'm Nell. Um, born again, child of God, washed with the blood of Jesus. Amen. Um, that is just who I am. Um, yes, I also came here in 2017. My life has not been the same. Your life has not been the same. Obviously, on a positive note. Amen. Yes. Amen. <laughs> okay, so one of the things that we would like to highlight is what brought you to the Miracle Center, Christ Ambassador's Church? Like, firstly, how did you get to hear about us? Oh, um, I had been in prayer. Um, I had been in prayer because... I was born again, but there was so much confusion, so much emptiness, so much sorrow, so much pain, and I'd been going to church. But I, I prayed a prayer. I said, Lord, direct us to a place. And um, I had a, I had Christian channels, but uh, I'll always watch one program, and I never knew ATV until I prayed that prayer, and the Lord answered me. And I um, said, one of the things that you are going to notice about my servant is that he he's compassionate and he's a father, he's loving. And indeed, when I when I saw the program um, on TV and I saw him preaching, I said, this is it. This is it. This is it. Is that when you see the compassion and love mm -hmm. that he has, is that something that you were longing for in your life, especially oh, yes. in this journey as a Christian? It, it, it was, you know, it was, um, and I, I, I was empty, and I was, I was, I was getting inside depression, and I was feeling defeated. And I think at times you need someone that's gonna shake you and remind you of who you are, you know. And um, when you were speaking on TV, suddenly something clicked, you know, a, a new leap of faith just took over me and wow. I knew I had to dig in deep um, um, in regards of who I am and that was the man. That was the man. Amen. And for yourself? No, no. Yeah, you know, um, I remember when my sister um, discovered um, the bishop. Yes. She called me and she said, no, no, I found a church. She said, I'm tired. I'm tired. I don't want to hear it. She's like, no, 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 no. Wait. One thing that you're going to love about this man of God is the compassion and the love that he has for the people of God. Wow. And, you know, it caught my attention because that's what we've been looking for, you know, a love from a father, you know, um, a compassion, compassion from a father, you know, real compassion. And when she said that, I said, okay, let me just give it a try. And we came, 
you know, and she said, she said to me, we'll go to church. If you don't see the compassion and the love, you're free to walk away and never come back. And by the time I walked in, by just hearing his voice, yes, how he he ministered, yeah. how he gives the people time, how he's so patient, I said, okay, maybe I can be here. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just been like it. And from 2017 to now, 2019, mm-hmm. you have been coming. Oh, yes. yes. Now that is so amazing and so remarkable because every single person who comes, they have an experience. Oh, yeah. They have an experience of what God just all of a sudden begins to do in their lives. But now, I just want to highlight just briefly, what were the struggles that really you were saying? Firstly, I, to coach you, you say that you're like, God, I'm tired, I'm just tired, I'm depressed, I'm sleeping into depression, I'm almost forgetting who I am in Christ. Yeah. But what were those struggles that were causing all that? Phew. Um, I think lack of truth. Um, revelation you know um, teaching yes because when when, when I came here um, I I had been trained as a sangoma and um, then I got born again but the depth of who I am in regards to the word of God the teaching the revelation that moves you forward yes was was just was just missing I, I i had known that yes god loves me i've been made in the image of god but the revelation mm-hmm. and when i when i came here there was revelation wow. there was a fresh fire that hit my spirit there was there was illumination the, the word was taught it was broken down and um, you know that, that 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 is what I began to heal me yeah. because when I began to see Christ, you know, Jesus says, I, I, "I have come to reveal you." And when I came here, Christ got revealed to me. Amen. You know, and yes. from there, I just oof, you hung on. I hung on, and that was the, the revelation of Christ. Yeah, that was the beginning of the transformation the beginning of healing. The beginning of healing. We'll, we'll go back there. Yeah. We'll go back there. <laughs> For you, no, no. What, what was it? What, were, know, what were the struggles? Like my sister is saying that we come from the background of you know ancestral worship and all of that. When we became born again, Jesus was the only solution for us. But we lacked the depth, mm. you know, of who He is to us and who we are to Him mm. in on earth. You know, Jesus. and um, we struggled, you know, and uh, as young creatures also we, we didn't know the truth you know we, we just caught on to the cult of jesus we ran with it but in, in in that process lacking you know the correct mentor that was gonna break down jesus for you he was actually gonna tell you that it's okay to be a pipe band you yes. know um, um yeah and we were like that and when we got here we were good now you know we were good enough, um, we loved God, we loved God, but you know, the challenges were so much mm. that we felt that is this Christianity true? So when you say you're giving up, you're also giving up on the ministry itself. Yeah, we, oh, personally for me, I remember when Dr. Peter said we came to him for the first time, mm. he delivered me from the spirit of frustration. Mm. Um, and I, I was angry, and I remember the message of the Christ, he said, forgive God. He said, forgive God, a lot of you um, certain things to happen to you, but now you're blaming me, you're angry with me, and God says I'm sorry. And I broke mm. down and he came to me because I felt that God, you know, mm. you got us to be born again. Wow, amazing. You saved us from darkness, you saved us from unsuspected. I preach, but I'm still oppressed. I preach, mm. so, you know, a, a persecutor. What is happening? For, for how long were you in that, in that battle, that struggle? You are representing Christ, you're on the forefront, but behind the scenes, you can't live with yourself. You know, you preach to people and tell them that God is a healer, God is a provider, God is this and that. You come home with the same problems that you're dealing with, the same depression. The same attacks that you had, mm. you know, the same spiritual oppression is still there, and you don't have that person that's going to say to you, yeah. I've been through this. You know, um, it's possible for you as a preacher to experience this. You need to be mm. delivered in this, in mm. this you know, area, or you need to read the word in this sense for you to be delivered. We didn't have that you know, mm. until we came. 
Indeed, you came here to the Christ Ambassadors Church Miracle Center where you found your deliverance. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you found that oasis of refreshing water Amen. that just satisfied you, that mm -hmm. quenched the thirst within. Oh, yes. Now, going back to you, uh, Neo, mm -hmm. you, you, just a while ago, you highlighted on healing. Healing for what? What was going on? Where, were the, where was the struggle, the pain? Was it physical, emotional? spiritual what was going on phew massive massive attacks i think surrendering and and really putting god first was, was what tormented me because I, I i i i searched for other things and i didn't find him there you know i i became more empty darkness you know, overpowered me because I wasn't speaking light. I wasn't seeking what was light, you know, because at times you're in church, but there's something that is missing. And until you surrender to him and say, you are the only master, you are delivered. And I, I went through that oppression. I had insomnia. I didn't sleep at night, you know, and, and I would say, Lord, you're so powerful. The Bible tells me that you are God, you're the Alpha and Omega. Why am I oppressed? You know, and um, when I came here, I was taught how to fight back because I've been given authority. Yeah. I've, been give, I've been given power. Yes. And I, I just, I got healed. And even on the 31st, I think there was still a bit of doubt in, in regards to on. who I am. Yes, yeah. you know, and um, I'm, I'm, I'm healed. You are healed totally. I am healed totally, totally. Yeah. You know, we, we, we're gonna highlight more of these. Now viewers, I'll have to hold the ladies right here. We'll be back just after the break. Welcome back to you all ATV viewers. As you can see, we are in a beautiful discussion. Now back to you. Now, it's you are highlighting your journey, but there's something that we just want to tackle on that you mentioned in the previous segment, the depression. But before I go to the depression, please allow me. Yeah. Can we just tackle on the sangoma, the time when you were, when you initiated as a sangoma, but before you were initiated, before they told you that this is what you need to do, obviously it wasn't your will, but what was going on in your life and how did that advice come to be in your life? I was, I was sick all the time um, and oppressed, you know, as a child who is still in high school and um, I have anxiety, uh, I'm rejected a lot, you know, and um, until in, in my family there was a discovery that I had to train as a Sangoma because I was very sick, extremely. And um, that's where the surrender came because I was told that you will not amount to anything, you will not get married, you will not finish school. And when you think about such things, you've got your own dreams as a child and they tell you that if you don't submit to this, you will not amount to anything. And um, that's, that's, that's how I, I think I, I, I surrendered because I was sick. When you talk of being sick, what sort of ailments can you just take us through as yeah. you know with the viewers? What sort of ailments you were encountering? Migraine. I, I didn't sleep. Um, there was a point where, and, and the migraine would start at a particular time. And I started feeling like I'm going to lose my mind. Paralysis, my body. I was always in pain, physical pain, you know, and, and, and emotionally as well. That's, a, that's another sickness. You're just sick emotionally. Mm -hmm. Nothing makes you happy, you know. I encountered such. Tomorrow morning I have to go to school, you know. The migraine, loss of concentration and focus, those are the attacks. Those were the attacks, and I'm just trying to imagine being this little girl. Yeah. Very impressionable because young people are very impressionable. Yeah. You know, we have to be careful what we surround them with. Yeah. But how did that affect you socially on the playground, in the classroom with other peers? Mm -hmm. I was rejected a lot. Mm -hmm. I was. I didn't have friends, and um, then then I was told that it's because of this power. 
that is after me. I was isolated a lot. At times they would be like, are you a boy or are you a girl? And it, it would hurt me as a child. So I didn't like being around people because they never wanted to be around me. And that just made me curl up into, into a person that was, had lost confidence. So that was a major attack. I was shy. I didn't have confidence. I wouldn't speak like this. Mm. Yeah. And then educationally, how did it affect you? I, 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 I was the smartest kid in class until yeah. discovering this. My marks dropped. I, I failed. I was because I, I trained before matric. I was told you're not going to make it. I was very young. You're not going to make it. Um, you, you have a calling. Yeah. You, you are not supposed to be educated, you're not, you know, mm -hmm. you have a calling, you need to heal people. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't make it until I had to go and train. Now, now the time when you had to go and train, obviously you are yeah. young. Very young. <laughs> you, have to, you have to gather up all this courage, yeah. this confidence to say, I'm going to go to this unknown place, yeah. far from civilization. Yeah. I'm trying yeah. to picture what it's Out. like. Yeah. I've never been exposed <laughs> to such environments yeah. or such culture. But what, what was it like, the journey going oh. there? And you know, the experience when they welcomed you, did you feel welcome? Did you feel normal? Was it, was it the actual, was it the truth that they were selling to you? That you'll Oof. be fine, you're gonna be welcomed, you'll feel a sense of belonging. I, I, I tell you, I actually tried committing suicide right in there because you're bound, um, you're chained, you know, you, you wake up early, in the early hours of the morning going to the mountain to go and dig stuff, you know, you're, 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 you're a student, so you're trained the lifestyle and the adaption of that kingdom. And um, the hardship that is there, you are taught to, 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 to be this type of soldier um, that depends on darkness. And um, at a young age and surrounded by people who have already absorbed the, themselves in that belief is, is tough. Because if, if that's the only truth that is a lie that you are facing. Yeah. And the emptiness, you know, there's no peace. Yeah. That is, there's no peace. You're, de you're constantly depending on things to, to get peace. And it was terrible. I missed home. I missed my parents. I felt like my youth had been stolen away from me, my identity, because I would graduate and be this thing mm. that I don't know. And it was tough. And how long were you locked up there? Oh, for months. Oh, for months. months. Yeah. Almost a year. Yeah. Yeah, I think a year, yeah, I think for 12 months 12 of months. training, training away from school, yeah. away from home, away from love. Oh, yeah. And then like when you finished, that was the day they've said that you've Ooh. graduated. What was the feeling? Could you just try to unpack that for yeah. us? Did you feel a sense of relief? Like finally, I've done what they've asked me to do. I'm sure I'm in one piece with the ancestors. Yeah. Did you feel that? You know, you, you, when, when, when they tell you about freedom, there's, there's a sense of relief, but freedom is not always freedom. Mm -hmm. I, was, I, was, I was rejoicing, but not knowing that I'm, 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 I'm told that I'm free, yet I'm not. Mm -hmm. And when I got home, the very things that led me to go back to that place were not, were, were, were not sorted out. You know, the Bible says if, if, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Yeah. And the foundations are never dealt with in the kingdom of darkness. Yes. There is no power yes. released for that kingdom. Mm -hmm. Therefore, they, they, they began to come out slowly, yet I was told I was free. And I realized that I was more bound than ever because I was sold into a thing, an idol. Mm -hmm. And now, like I know, I know you as you're unpacking this, I can actually, yeah. I'm actually flowing with the emotion that you're actually yeah. taking us through yeah. the pain. Oh, I, and I understand the healing that you mentioned earlier yes. in the segment. And but then now the journey, mm -hmm. you are out of the place. Amen. When did you get born again? I I got born again after some years. After, um, some years. after some years, I think I was now twenty twenty one. I'm not sure, but somewhere there. Yes. Um, of coming back, I came from a background where there wasn't knowledge on on right. Jesus and and then alcohol. You know, there was a dysfunctionality in my family due to darkness, mm -hmm. and um, 
Oh, the loudest trumpet is, is the one that God blows. And my brother got born again and he said, I found, I found something. I found light. Come. And um, ultimately, I was told, you're going to die. You can't. You can't live this You're going to be crazy. You're going to be insane. These no. powers will not let you go. You are going to die. And I said, um, I was told about God. I said, if indeed this God is powerful, I will not die. Mm. And I got born again and um, light. Light comes. Light comes. I'm like, wow, this is who I am. This is who you are in Christ. This is who I am. Jesus died for me so I can be free. I don't have to offer anything. I don't have to sell anything. Wow. It was too good to be true. It was too yeah. good to be true. No but slaughtering. liberating? No liberating. slaughtering. Uh, chickens to be accepted. Yeah. Uh, how many times yeah. would you do those practices, yeah. actually? A lot. A lot. Every time. <laughs> Every, time. <laughs> Every time. For anything you have For to. For anything. I think you know? even here, because they trained. I yes. Know, yeah, you know, they would actually go and breathe. You know how we Christians wake up in the morning and speak to God? Yes. In the morning Holy Spirit? Yes. They would do that also. In the morning, wake up and speak to your idol. Every oh. morning, you know, the thing. Yes, the snuff. The snuff. You do that every The incense. Morning. And as she said, that after doing that, she goes back to the same problems. Oh. The headache is still there, the depression is still there, the anger is still there, yeah. the emptiness is still there, the rejection is still there. So yeah. when she, we found God, we were like, what? It's true. You know, like, and, and, and even like what you're saying, like everything, the depression, the anger, the frustration, everything was still there. Yeah. Even after, you know, dedicating yeah. your life, after yeah. they sell a lie to you, yes. you know, basically that. But, but during your adult years, before you came to Christ and Pastors Church, that time, what was happening? Because we've highlighted the challenges you had yeah. as a teenager, being locked up in all these emotions, the demonic oppression, everything that was happening, they tell you to go through the Sangoma process. Yeah. You come out worse. But now you're out of high school. Now you're an adult. You're trying to adult in this world. Oh, yes. What, what was going on relationally? Were you trying to get into relationships? Workplace? What was happening financially? Um, you know, the Bible says, fight to the good fight. Mm -hmm. And that is true. Mm -hmm. Because after you leave those things, um, the enemy attacks and if you have not been trained in the areas of wearing the full armor of God um, you may go back because the relationships failed um, I was still rejected I still encountered that and um, work I was according to the system of the world I was told you're not going to amount to anything you know there's a procedure that you must go through and if you haven't went through that procedure you will not amount to anything. Oh, but we serve a good God. Um, it was tough. Even after that, I was carrying a Bible. And those who knew me were like, you see, we told you. Come back. You're not making it. Come back. This thing is, is, is strong. Ah, but um, it, it, it was difficult. But I, there was something that would not allow me to go yes. back. That you cannot buy with anything. You cannot yes. buy. It was peace. Mm. I, I, I would have doubts where I, would, I felt like, let me go back to that, to that um, because it sells you a lie. So you're temporarily fed, yes. but it's, it's, it's temporary. Mm. And one of the things that I battled with was that I never got peace from mm. that place. But there was something that God would, would, would constantly give me, and that was peace. Whether I was in difficulties, whether I was rejected in relationships, there was this thing that money could not buy, and that was peace. That's what I held on to because I felt like I can't get that at any place from any other God but this one. It became your anchor. Now it that became was my anchor. That was soon after you got born again. Yes. And the call you mentioned that you preachers. When did oh, you yes. become? When were you called? And when was the first time you stepped out? Well, we were always new. You always knew. Family, okay. That there was something about us. All six of us are oh. preachers, but wow. many of us are, are like really out there. Hands so on. We are, and the other things just they're still coming. Okay. But there was always something about us. But like she said, because we were not introduced to Jesus, we came from a village where Jesus was not preached at yeah. all. So we, we thought that we all had to be in some moments, you know, as yeah. she was she went there first. Mm -hmm. Young as she was, so obviously we would have with her that 
if something bad is happening in my life, it means I must take off the head. Mm. Uh, you know. And when we got born again, um, we got born again in 2009. Wow. Um, and we discovered the calling, and it actually set on us in 2012. And um, I won't lie, it was it was terrible. It was hard because remember that we belonged mm. to darkness. Yes. And um, you know the Bible says that we have been transferred from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Mm. But the minute that is done, there's war. You know. Always. Yeah. Mm. And um, yeah. Satan, you know, the kingdom of darkness actually, you know, could not let us go forward. Um, and we discovered that we were called. Wow, interesting. We are called. To do what? We called to be preachers. Then we started preaching, and it was actually amazing because we had. She was like, "Oh my God!" So this was this is what you know uh, the kingdom of darkness was trying to hide. Wow! You know, we wow. realized that she was, you know, you know, in the kingdom of darkness, she prophesied through these things, but we realized, that, oh, we could actually do this through the word of God for free. Wow! You know, and wow, wow it's just been the journey in 2012. And, with challenges, with anger still, because we have, as hence you say, that if the foundations be destroyed, what can the nations do? We were preaching, but with the wrong foundation. Preaching with the wrong foundation. I'll just stop you there, right there. Now, viewers, as you're listening, I know the story is getting more and more enlightening and interesting. But I pray that as you watch, I'm sure right now at the edge of your seats, you want to understand what happened next. And I'm sure most of you, you can relate to what is happening. If there are problems that you can identify with within your own families. But please stay tuned. We'll be back after the break. Viewers, thank you so much for staying tuned with us right here on ATV channel. Remember that we are on this program that we are airing. It is the prophetic journey with Bishop Dr. Ida Pitasite. It is a show that we highlight real people, real solutions, real issues, and real testimonies that people have brought right here out of the grace of this ministry under the leadership of Bishop Dr. Ida Pitasite. Now, behind the, behind the scenes, we were just discussing, you know, during the break, we're discussing a lot the importance of being in church, the importance of fellowship. Because you came the first time you came here 2017, but you came back for more. And you kept on coming back for more. And here you are today. Here we are today discussing that. But no, no, would you kind of highlight to the viewers why it's important not to forsake the gathering, you know, of the saints, why it's important to fellowship with other believers? Why is it so? Firstly, you know, when we touch on the presence of God, the presence of God starts with the mm. But it is important to have fellowship with him and to understand the presence of God. Yeah. Because remember that when you're alone, you can get attacked mentally, mm. you can get so weird. But when you fellowship, when you come to church with people that have gone through what you've been through, mm. with people that have conquered what you've been through, with people that are still struggling and trying to conquer, it becomes an encouragement. So, like I said, when we found the church, it was a different type of administration. Yes. You know, uh, Dr. Ida is so radical. Yeah. You know, he's, 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 he's radical. You know, he's, he's extremely radical. You know? And he, he, he portrays this radical God who does not want his children to suffer. Mm. You know, and when, when I came here, and I saw, the, I saw the importance of being in the medical center mm. and being in a church where everybody wants God, wants God to, to solve their problem, yes. and actually loves God. Wow. You know? So yeah, that's, that's, oh. that's just what kept me coming to church, wow. that I'm not alone. Amen. You know, I'm not judged. Yes. You know, everybody's compassionate. Yes. You know? And yeah, that's important. Thank you for highlighting mm. that. Now, now back to you, Neil. You know, we, you, there was a recent deliverance that took place during the cross overnight service. Mm from 2018 to year beginning 2019. And, and God also had another plan for you guys as a family. Now tell us what happened during that moment. Sure. Um, Pastor was, Pastor Ida was, was um, he was he was ministering and um, he was talking, I think about greatness and the kingly anointing. Yes. And I don't know what happened. I was already in front, wow. you know. And even in my heart, there was just a cry because I had been going through insomnia. 
you know, and those elements of, of, of oppression and, yeah, and strife and all that. And um, he laid hands on me and I got my deliverance mm. right there. That very night I slept, mm. you know, but there were forces that were, that were pulling me not to go, but um, the hand of God is mightier. Mm. And it brought me to the arena of deliverance. Um, hence, I just want to add on what Pastor Mo was saying that um, it's important to come to church. Mm. There, there, there is an anointing and an arena of deliverance that God allows in this place. Yeah. And it yeah. flows through the men of God. Mm. And if you're staying there at home and you are doing, you're not doing anything about your situation, it grows. Mm. It grows. It grows and it, 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 it wants to kill you. But come to the arena of deliverance, which is the church, which is, which is this church also. Christ and Buster's Amen. Church. Amen. Amen. Now, you know, like, even as you're talking about that deliverance that you yes. recently had, but one of the questions that I have for you, both of you, is that yes. you've, just like myself, you've gone through a series of deliverance. Yes. But, but basically for you as sisters, what has kept you holding on during the process? Why didn't you give up? Didn't you have moments of doubt, moments of shame, or like, what's going on? When is this going to end? You know, those moments are going to be But this mm. goes back to having a revelation of who Christ is. Mm. Okay. You know, the yes. Bible says that God gave yes. his one to die and has never been changed. Wow. Mm. Problems or no problems remain in the love of God. Amen. So I think, I thank God, mm. you know, that me and my sister have the same revelation about mm. Christ. When she's going through the worst, and I'm going through the worst, we talk about it, but we look at each other in the glass and we say, Jesus is the solution. Jesus is the solution. So yes. we don't retreat. We yes. don't go back, we don't stop. But the moments of wanting to give up are always there. Mm -hmm. But it also goes back to the, the church you go to. Wow. Our, our, our Father in the Lord is a soldier. Yes. Sometimes when you want to give up, you know, some, you will want to give up. You know, as a preacher and even as a pastor, knowing God, you know, we've been preaching for over five years. You yes. Know, we know God, we've seen God. Mm -hmm. But sometimes you just wake up and you feel like God has mm -hmm. forgotten you know, this thing, you know, not just mm -hmm. before the Bible. But you look at the life mm -hmm. of your father in the Lord and you're like, if my father yes. does not even show a single of emotion, wow. why would I give up? Exactly. You know, that's, you know, that's why I was like, I'll never know this church. Amen. I'll never know this church because our Father in the Lord is a man of strength and man of strength and man of force and man mm. of teaching. And yes. that alone is a message for us. It's a message indeed for every one of us. And for you now, what was it? What kept you holding on during the process, the entire process? Yeah, because it's, it's, it's a painful one. Mm. Um, but, you know, meditating on the Word of God, um, there is nothing in the world. There is nothing in the world. Jesus says, you are not of this world. Yes. So you malfunction, you know, when you keep running to the things of the world and surrendering, you know, finally surrendering. When you don't surrender, at times you delay your, your even your breakthrough, yeah. you know, because the glory can never go to God. And God is a God that wants his glory. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all about him. And I think... What kept me going was that I un I finally understood that I'm from a different kingdom. Amen. You know, yeah. So I'm, I'm also just reminded about when Moses was born, the mother hid the child. I, I want to say it's important to hide that gift that God has given you away from the world. Mm -hmm. There's so many vultures there. Yeah. There's so many yeah. attacks. Yes. And when you finally discover that baby, you want to protect it. Yes. And that's what kept me going, wanting to protect the child that God has given you. Amen, amen. You know, like listening to both of you today during this program, I a scripture comes to mind. Amen. That's beautiful ashes. Mm -hmm. I'm oh, seeing yes. how beautiful yes. God has beautified mm -hmm. both of you, you know, for the ashes of life mm -hmm. that life had thrown at you, mm -hmm. that you're forced to embrace. But today I look at what the beauty, the glory that God has, it's permeating through your eyes, through the radiant smiles that you have. Now, for those who are watching us right now, a lot can relate mm -hmm. to your family, a lot can relate to your struggles. Mm -hmm. A lot can relate to a lot of things that you have highlighted today. In the midst of 
the beauty that you now have, that you're radiating, how would you encourage them? Hmm. I'd always go back to Jesus and the solution. Wow. Um, I realized, you know, I would do a comparison, you know, it's like when I was in the world, I, I was ordinary. Mm -hmm. I was I was ordinary. You mm -hmm. know, I, was, I was ordinary, that's the word. And um, when I became born again, I was washed with the blood of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now it was no longer about how I look outside, but what I came inside. Mm -hmm. Then it made me extraordinary. Mm -hmm. So I just want to say to, to people that you don't know who you are, that are, that are, that are beautiful according to the word, that is who you are, because real beauty mm -hmm. doesn't come from the world. Mm -hmm. It comes from God. I just want to say to you that give your life to Jesus. Amen. There is totally nothing in the world that can ever satisfy you. Mm -hmm. We've been there, we've tried it, and yeah. nothing works. Like, you know, our pastor Leo said that you, you, it's temporary. Mm -hmm. You know, you would get fulfillment in your life. Yes. Because when you go back, the voice becomes double. Oh. So you would have to do more oh. to fill it up. Mm -hmm. yes. Then after that, it becomes extremely double. Oh. So with Christ, your double is double. To Amen. Your sin yes. is dealt with. Hallelujah. Your shame, your mm. failures, they are dealt with. So mm. come to Christ. Amen. Oh, Jesus. For you, Neo, what would you say to encourage the viewers? Uh, I, I would say that um, go back to the source. Um, connect back to the source. Who is your maker? Who is your creator? Um, who is the alpha and the omega? There is no other life than the one that Christ gives. There is no other peace. Now, I want to say to the viewers at home that find that thing. Find yes. that thing about yourself. Wash it with the blood of Jesus, with Christ. Nothing makes sense until you come into yes. contact with your maker. Yes. Because you will malfunction wherever you go. Even if you can feel great in the world, but if you're not representing this father, yes. who is our maker, there's so much emptiness. Yes. There's so, even if you can drive that car, mm. after you get it, there's emptiness. Jesus is the, the giver of peace. He's the giver of life. So, so, so find that thing about yourself and connect to your source. You'll never look back. Oh it, it, boy. it goes back to, 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 to who you are. Um, the greatest attack in the world is identity crisis. Mm -hmm. Is that people are defining themselves by what the world says, mm -hmm. what the newspapers say, what social media says. If social media says this is a, this is a beautiful person and you look at yourself and you don't mm -hmm. look like that, you, 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 you lose confidence. But the Bible describes you in a manner that, that overcomes what the world says. Mm. If you look for yourselves in places where you were not made, you will malfunction. But there is an identity that is greater, and that is the identity of Christ. The Bible says, set your mind on things that are above and not things that are below. You know, and if you just ask God, God, show me who I am. You, you will see how beautiful you are. Yes. You will see how precious you are. Yes. Even if you don't have a foot, even if you don't have a finger, you will understand how much God loves you, how he can use you just like that. Yes. And, and, and I just say to the youth out there, don't waste your time on things that are perishable, things that are, are, are corruptible, but focus on God. God is our maker. Amen. Amen. He is our maker our indeed. Maker. Now with that, we wrap up today's edition. In fact, in today's episode of The Prophetic Journey with Bishop Dr. Ida Bittersight. Thank you so much for tuning in. We look forward to hearing from you. Please send through those reviews. And remember, as the ladies were highlighting, our Father in the Lord is a vessel that you know will impact you with the word of god he is a minister of the word of god now remember to always join us whether you live stream with us on our youtube channel that is at Ida peter site or on our on our facebook page that is at christ ambassadors church sa remember to turn in every wednesday at 6 p.m for a moment of truth moment in the word of god as it's unpacked by bishop dr Ida peter side now that is one of his you know, powerful graces that he's been given by God to just release and, you know, impact our generation. Now, thank you so much for joining me, Tracy, your host. Till next time, God bless you.